Good morning and welcome to the virtual St. George's Church in Uptown New Orleans. We're most pleased that you are with us. We are celebrating the Holy Eucharist, Rite 2. Our opening hymn is hymn number 9, verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 
A lesson from the book of Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their drugs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and dark thickness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither the, their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Today's gradual is from Psalm 90, which may be found in your bulletin or on page 717 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will read the psalm responsively by half verse. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly, like the grass. In the morning, it is green and flourishes. In the evening, it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly, and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. A lesson from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have everything written for you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a night a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness. For that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord.
to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them, and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled the accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you? that I reap where I did not sow, and I gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, 
where they will be, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to share with you maybe two or three short sermons, or maybe hardly any short sermon or long sermon, but we're going to give it a try because there are so many interesting things in our lessons today. I do wish to start, however, with a little bit of teaching. The caliph that we have heard, blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, is from the very beginnings of the history of the Anglican Church, which is one of the beautiful collects written by Thomas Cranmer, Archbishop of Canterbury. He was the first truly reformed Archbishop in the time of the Protestant Reformation in England, and he had a wondrous world of words with which to work. This collect Blessed Lord, who has caused all Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning, is very much attuned to the Catholic side of Protestant thinking. Scripture is central. What Jesus said, what the prophets said, what Paul said, what the epistles taught us, is a core of our religious beliefs. Thomas Cranmer was deeply convinced of that, and he wrote numerous collects and other instructional works so that we might fully understand that we are both Catholic liturgically and in many ways theologically, but we are deeply imbued with the Protestantism of the central Word of God in Holy Scripture. And it is indeed one of the great colleagues of the church. But I really want to turn in the main part of this sermon to at least two of our lessons, uh, focusing mostly on the gospel of the, from the 25th chapter of Matthew. Luke taught, or at least said that Jesus taught, in numerous parables. Interestingly, Mark was not so interested in parables. He had a number of short parables, but nothing intricate like the parables that Jesus was recorded to have said in Luke's Gospel. Of course, Matthew had great teaching. The Sermon on the Mount, not a parable at all, was one of the great pieces of teaching from Jesus, and it is at the very core of our Christian life and Christian work. The 25th chapter of the Gospel, according to Matthew, is right at the time when Jesus was preparing his disciples to live without him. He was going to be offered as a perfect sacrifice for us but there was much teaching that still had to go on. Jesus, according to Matthew, talked to his disciples, and he talked to them about the things that they would have to do and they would have to say. And he told them a story. And the story which we heard in the gospel is about a master sending away uh, his servants as he was going on a trip himself and giving them instructions on what to do. He gave each to them some funds, funds to use for themselves, but also funds to invest in their future and the future of the master as well. The master went away for a period of time and each of the servants did what he thought best. Two of the servants invested wisely with the gifts that they had been given, and one did not. When the master returned, 
he sat them down and asked them, what has happened to the gift, the investment I made in you? One was able to say, I have done very well and I am ready to return it to you. A second said I, said, I haven't done quite as well, but I've done as best I could, and I return this investment to you. And the third said, actually, I didn't invest it at all. I squandered it. That's part of the story of our lives. God has invested a tremendous amount in us. God has given us great opportunities opportunities to do the best we could or less than the best we can. We're living through a very difficult time. You don't need me to remind you of that. It's a time when we struggle with our own finances, our own health, our own families, our own hopes, and struggle through our own fears. I do believe, however, that God has given to us an investment so that we can come out of this pandemic in such a way that we will return not only to God more than we started with, but we will return to ourselves and the same to each other. We have an opportunity to make the best out of a very difficult situation. We will do it with faith. We will do it with love. We will do it with understanding. And we will have to do it with forgiveness. Forgiveness for others and forgiveness for ourselves, for our failings. But it's not just a task for us. It's a wonderful opportunity. And I pray that we will take that opportunity, that investment, use it with love and care and understanding, personal forgiveness and forgiveness for others. And we will be better people. We will be a better nation. We will be a better church. And we will be a better world if we do things with faith and love and care, forgiveness and understanding. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the love of God and of Christ, in hope for our own futures and the futures of others, in faith in the one holy Catholic Church, we proclaim our faith saying together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 3, found on page 387 in our Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. 
that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be peace and justice on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Of your charity, we ask for your prayers for the following concerns and people. For our seminarian, Lindsay Audrey. For the sick, Barbara Connaughton, Richard Wolber, Jimmy Negrato, Shirley Cole Gotti, Judith Fink, Ilse Fink, Ruth Skirto, Isabel Oliver, Marva Mitchell, Marshall Montford, Deborah Donalds, Mary Charles Jackson, Nancy Dupont, Bishop Charles Jenkins, Stan MacArthur, James Pantera, Lee Wogelman, Mary Margaret, those affected by the hurricanes in Louisiana. Please take a moment to add your intentions. Hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that thy servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. During our period of silence, let us think of all the things that we wish God to forgive us for and strengthen us in as we offer ourselves to each other and to our Savior. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in life as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer A from page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. 
Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Christ, which was given for you, preserve your body and soul unto everlasting life. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve your body and soul unto everlasting life. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.